Hi, I'm Nikki Spinks. I'm a fell runner and a farmer. I started fell running in about 2001 and I've been farming since I was little. When I was little I just used to run as part of running around the farm to go and get the ponies in and that's how I got into running and then I got into an office job and I left running and missed it because I didn't really realise how much of a big part of my life it was. So I started running again then, um, just on the roads. I'd also put a little bit of weight on, so I was doing the usual three times a week, like you see a lot of women doing, trying to lose that little bit. And that's how I got back into it. When I first started fell running, the longest um, race that I aimed to do was the Three Peaks fell race. And when I did it, I set off really slowly because it's, it was the longest I'd ever run. I had not run um, 24 miles before. And so when I was climbing Wernside, which is the second hill, I passed Wendy Dodds and she was so encouraging. It was unbelievable. And she was a real legend of mine because I'd read about her. Um, and then at the end, she caught me and she's just said, oh, I've been trying to catch you all the way and I couldn't catch you. So she's one of my legends. And another one, I mean, it's Sarah Rowell. And, and nowadays when you see the youngsters coming through like Jasmine, this is there taking it to another level. You know, I might have started this um, but Jasmine's just taking it away now. The first race, I remember doing a 10K when I was trying to lose weight and I hated it because people could walk faster than I could run. But that was my first 10K and I didn't do another one for about 10 years. And then I did Leeds Abbey Dash, Dewsbury 10K, and then I found the Fells. So I've, I've done very few road runs. Um, the first fell race I did was the Trunts, which is just four miles and 500 meters of climb and I know 500 foot actually and I was really scared I didn't think I could do it so working um, running in with farming has been a learning curve over the years because initially I tried to follow plans and I found I was running at eight o'clock at night after doing a full day on the farm and after a while well after a very short while that didn't work so now I run a lot in winter when the cows are inside but actually in summer I don't do a lot of running I'll tend to try and do a big race at the weekend and then just have to chill out during the week because we're too busy I first heard of the Bob Graham when I joined Peniston Footpath Runners in 2002 and there was a, a lad there doing it um, and I thought it was the most incredible thing ever that anyone could ever do because it's uh, 42 peaks in the Lake District of about 68 miles um, and you have to do it in 24 hours um, and this, this lad, Andy Plummer, was doing it in June 2005. So when I did my first BG in 2005 in a sort of normalish time of 23 and a half hours and then I progressed from there to doing the other two rounds um, the Paddy Buckley and the Charlie Ramsey and then I got faster through tweaking my training um, just being really specific on the long stuff and at one point somebody said I might have a go at the record so um, yeah I had, a, I had two goes at the record the first time was 18 hours and 12 and the second time was 18 hours and 6 <laughs> in much better weather but and so I decided that that was my time I was an 18 hour BG person well, I first heard of the double BG when I was given a booklet from Dark Peak, um, 10 Years of Dark Peak, and in it was Roger Bowmeister's account of his double BG, written by Martin Stone, actually. But when I read it, I just thought, that is absolutely bonkers. Nobody's, you know, who would have thought of doing a double BG the way he did it and actually completing it as well. But then that idea just stuck in my head. It must have been about... Well, probably about 2012. I knew I had the idea in my head for about six years before I actually got up the confidence to have an attempt in 2016 myself. So over the years when I've been doing the Paddy Buckley and the BG and the Charlie Ramsey, I've probably done about 12 rounds in total leading up to the double BG. So I... I I managed to have a quite what I call an elite support group that I always send the emails out to. And I sent those emails out to that group and they're dark peakers, they're lakes race people, Penniston footpath runners, um, 
people I've supported and I sent that email out in the November before the double BG and they all replied and said they'd do it which was quite a relief and I also asked them to do two legs each so both the clockwise and the anti-clockwise which again meant that they had a lot more work to do probably less sleep and a lot more logistics for themselves but it really worked um, on the day so after I did the double BG I looked at the double Ramsu because people had actually done it both anti-clockwise and clockwise there was quite a lot of information on it um, I'd also done a trant around which is part of the Charlie Ramsey I'd done that anti-clockwise so I knew more about it than say the paddy um, and I went up and wrecked it which was quite hard because there's a lot of snow it's um, the route starts and finishes in Fort William and it's 24 Monroe's so it's got about the same amount of climb and distance as the BG um, 28,000 feet of climb and 66 miles um, but it's a lot rougher terrain because the Monroe's haven't got paths up them the way that I go up them so it's just heather and rock and if you get it you don't often get it wrong because they're usually great big lumps but you can find yourself on some really awful deep heather or rocky terrain um, I so I I planned it for 2018 I gave myself a year in between the two doubles to sort of recover and also to, to train for the the double Ramsey and when I attempted it it was just really one of those really awful hot days well we had a really hot summer so I was bound to get a really hot day and um, so I still set off at midnight and I knew it was really hot because I was in my shorts and t-shirt at midnight and I was too hot and it just got worse through the Saturday it got hotter but I think because I was in the zone I was just going for it and I managed to blank out the heat but slowly across Saturday night and then into Sunday Sunday morning climbing Ben Nevis at 8 o'clock nine o'clock in the morning was just horrendous I knew it was all going to fall apart then because I, I, yeah I just felt really tired I had no breath I was out <coughs> um, yeah I just I felt strong my legs felt strong but I, I didn't have enough breath to actually go fast enough and I thought well what we'll do is we'll go seven hours out turn around and try and recover some time on the way back when it gets cooler during the night but a few more things went wrong um, I got blisters on my feet my support weren't there at the turnaround point because I was behind schedule so they'd left not knowing where I was um, and then yeah so I did get support in the end because they came back but by then I was two hours behind schedule so then we set off back and I still felt quite strong and we went into it was unbelievable we went into clag we'd been boiling hot and in brilliant sunshine all day and we went into this freezing cold clag which just meant we lost even more time overnight um, so I think I just kept myself going by I'm pretty stubborn I think I always think there's a way around it I, I thought I was strong I could have made up time if maybe conditions had been better on the way back um, I also because the support on the Ramsey is so much harder than the BG the supporters had to walk into this support point for four hours so they'd only bought one pair of shoes to change into and I really could have done with a larger size of my mud claws um, but I didn't have I only had like another pair of six and a half so again my blisters just hurt me too much on the way back so but I was I was pleased to finish on Monday morning after having no sleep for three nights um, in 55 hours and 54 minutes <laughs> so I started doing races abroad about 2010 and I found that surprisingly they're really well marked so if I did a, a race here I was always going to take a map and a compass and everything and I took a map and a compass to the um, UTMB and found that every 20 meters there's a flag you don't need a map and compass they also have the the checkpoints their food is a bit random they like to eat cheese and salami and bread which at least in the in the UK races you tend to get the stuff I like like rice puddings and beans but um, anyway so that was they do have a noodle soup that's really good out there and that's what I tend to live on now so and obviously the hills out there are way bigger than anything that we have here so a lot of the times I just I equate a hill out there 
to say one and a half Ben Nevises because that's usually you can be climbing for 2,000 meters out there whereas in the UK we just don't have anything like that to climb. So when I first started doing the races I realized that the training is very similar to the rounds you're doing um, maybe you know 24 30 hours on your feet so going up about the same elevation but when you actually get to the rounds and the races they're completely different in organization because when you do the rounds it's all down to you you know your routes down to you your start time your start location often um, what you're going to eat on the way uh, and and the weather you can actually cancel the round if you want to whereas on a race that that's all taken off you which sometimes is really nice and sometimes you have to work with what they're providing you instead of you being in control of that so I, I like to do one round and one race a year because I think that breaks it up really nicely and the training's obviously the same so you just do one and then you're already trained up for the other <coughs> I like to see people getting out and um, being active so the increase in in trail races and ultra races is good in that way but I do feel that there's now the pressure on the actual countryside um, in that there are a lot of events taking place in say the really popular areas like the Lake District and some areas of the Peak District and that unfortunately is having an impact on the fell racing scene because we've been fell racing for years and years very low key not commercial very little impact on the land because of our low numbers and all these you know there's a lot of commercial races coming in and I, th I think over the years now ho hopefully the landowners will realize that you know we're not we should be differentiated between the um, the far races and the ultra races but overall I think the I love it when I especially when I see women you know taking on say a 30 miler and maybe two years ago they were trotting around the streets like I was doing running three miles three times a week to lose a bit of weight I, I just think that that is great you know that they're pushing themselves to that sort of limit well I've always felt that women are sort of slightly behind men because we weren't allowed to do marathons until the 1980s but the reason that I'm sort of better at long distance running is I think once you run after over an hour you have to start looking after yourself you can't just run off with no jacket and no food and the wrong shoes on if you're running over an hour these things actually start to affect you that you've got to be wearing the right kit knowing where you're going um, mentally it becomes harder because you're obviously tired and so you need some energy so you need to feed yourself and I think that's the first long race I did was Tanky's Trog which was Marston to Edale and after sort of an hour I found I was passing people but I just felt I was going at the same pace as always it's them that slow down and not me that speed up <coughs> so I think what motivates me to train because it's always a hard one actually I think if you are motivated you don't know why you're motivated you just want to get out there and, and do something but I know um, if I have if I've done a big challenge then I don't tend to put anything in the calendar for a little while because I know as soon as I've put something in the calendar that is what motivates you yeah, that you're slightly pushing yourself usually to do the next challenge or the next race so you need to get out there and, and train when the weather's really bad or you just don't feel like it I don't have a very um, scientific way of looking at my diet or nutrition I did do once I read all the, well a load of books and tried it out and it just wasn't really for me so now I tend to eat just fairly naturally meat and three veg very uh, traditional I'm a farmer my husband likes it um, he doesn't like kiwa and hummus and stuff like that so we tend to go for the meat and two veg um, and I think that really works. I don't like processed food. I like to see what's in my food. I mean, all those E numbers and other chemicals on the back of everything. I try to keep the chemicals down. And I think that actually works. I'm a very healthy person, don't catch a lot of colds, recover from injuries very quickly. So overall, I think a just good healthy diet helps. So when I'm racing, I tend to if it's a short race I tend to live on gels they're not great for me and my teeth feel awful afterwards but they work and you can get them down fast um, 
if I'm doing a longer race, say over 20 miles, then I'll start eating what I call proper food, which is sometimes muesli bars and and then every sort of hour I'll have something like a rice pudding or a little pot of beans, baked beans, um, or if it's hot, the f little pot of fruit salad. And I also like this noodle soup that they have in the um, in Europe. I've found you can just buy noodles here and just make that up. It's really quick. So. Well, back in 2012, I wasn't sponsored by Innovate, but I was trying to be. So I was sending a few emails and um, before that, so before I was sponsored by Innovate, I had two pairs of shoes. Or I had a little, I had three pairs because I'd always have like a racing pair, a, a middle pair, and then a like an old pair that was basically worn out, but I'd still use them because I couldn't really afford to have lots of shoes and try lots of shoes. So since I've been sponsored, it's been really good to actually be able to try more shoes out because obviously there are, you should have more shoes for the different terrains that I'm doing. If a, a short fell race, I'd be quite happy in my mud claws, but I wouldn't use those for like a hundred mile fell race in the in the in Europe because the terrain's completely different. I'd want a lot more cushioning and le well less grip, but still some grip. So it's been yeah, it's been great actually being sponsored by Innovate to be able to help the production of these shoes as well as wear them myself on races. Well, since I had cancer in two thousand and six. I um, I found Odyssey, a, a, a cancer charity, a small cancer charity that helps people um, who are recovering from cancer by giving them like a, a week long break in the countryside. So it, it was a charity that was good be for me because it was an outdoor charity. They, they like to get people in the outdoors. Um, and so I've always raised money for them. And then when I'm actually doing the challenges, I like to sort of set a new target and see if I can raise that amount of money because when I'm out there and it's really getting quite hard and I want to ditch it I just think you can't ditch it because all these people are paying money to see you finish basically so you better, better finish <laughs> so to race in I would usually use if it's a foul race the mud claws um, the new graphenes are have have the best grip that I've actually seen my husband saw the first test shoes that I was trying out in 2018 and he said well they just look like a motorbike tyre he says it's no wonder they've got such good grip because they actually sort of come out either side and you have to get used to running in them because you catch your shin a bit but once your legs realise that they have to be apart a little bit then they're absolutely um, awesome going downhill and on any slippery stuff or muddy stuff at all and I found that they've been really comfy as well right from the off I put the first test pair on to do the three peaks last year and just ran 24 miles in them straight out of the box and um, yeah I was just totally impressed no blisters no rubbing no nothing so that's what I would rate you know usually it's a mud cloth for a shorter foul race and then for an, a longer ultra it's um, the rock lights or the ultra 290s um, depending on where the race is so the Monte Rosa last year was quite a lot rockier than the uh, UTMB. So um, I used the rock lights for that because I needed the extra grip. In the bags, I tend to have like a little race. Race vests have been brilliant for me because years, well, everybody likes bum bags, but I don't like bum bags because they hurt me, you know, they go, go across my stomach. So I've always used a little rucksack and now race vests are coming in and so I've got the Innovate race vest for fell races and then the um, the bigger rucksacks for ultras. I think one of the best things about being involved in Innovate is actually as soon as I met the clothes designer and she was a woman called Helen I realised that's why all the clothes fit women because she's a woman and we're not just wearing small size men's which is what a lot of other companies do and uh, it's really obvious when you're wearing the clothes that they don't actually fit you they're just smaller um so yeah helen's brilliant been brilliant in in bringing on the women's clothing and the colors as well she's got a good eye for a nice color without it being too girly um, <coughs> and then with the packs as well i spent ages when we went to the utmb talking to james about what i really wanted out of a out of a pack you know lots of accessible pockets but with a decent size back in as well um, and so that's come out as well and then with the shoes um, again I get the, some test pairs 
probably about a year before they come out and sent out into the hills and fill out product reports and try and sort of test them to destruction and um, and you know and, and give my feedback on on every sort of aspect of them so the major leaps that I've I've seen in running um, tech and shoes has been the introduction of the graphene into the innovate shoes because last year when I, I got a pair to test well I basically couldn't test it to destruction because it just wouldn't destruct I just wore it and wore it I wore it for all my Ramsey um, reckeys out on the rocks there the grip on on the rock was incredible and then you could swap from rock to wet grass which again there's always I've always looked for a shoe that you can do that with and it's just been impossible there's been no shoe that would do both um, wet rock and wet grass because they're totally different like compounds so you need usually needed a different shoe so the graphene just made made the grippiness on the wet rock a lot um, firmer so that I was a lot more confident up in Scotland on that and I'm currently training in Wales and I found the same that the uh, the graphene's making the shoe a lot more grippy and then you can just go out for days on end and not worry about your shoes falling apart they they just keep on going the tread looks the same now as it did when I first got the pair so if someone wants to get into ultra running or fell running um, the first things you you would need is a decent pair of shoes with a bit of grip something like the rock light would be an excellent all-rounder because you can go you can do some road work with it a lot of trail work with it but it would also cope with take you know getting out onto the fells and um, you'd also need a, a decent waterproof because hopefully you won't just be a, a fair weather runner and, and stay indoors when the weather gets rough <coughs> and then I would say just start with a local you know something local four miles that you might know but introduce a few footpaths in there and then and then look at the the bigger hills and the wider picture and and start exploring the countryside around you and then somewhere like Wales or or the Lake District or the Peak District. Well quite a lot of people say to me that I, I motivate them when they've got a training plateau. I'm not sure I've ever had a training plateau. I think I've got far too much that I want to do to actually plateau. But I think as I'm getting older, I'm just waiting for that inevitable plateau. So at the moment, I'm trying to change my my training and certainly my recovery um, so that I think as older older people always say we need to train smarter and, and not harder or something. And I think that's, that's definitely true. You need to listen out for those niggles and go and see those sports massage people that become your best friends as you get old. Well, they should become your best friend as you're a runner because... They, they can work their magic on you and keep you running. Well, there are a lot of people doing flat running and road running. I know at Penniston Footpath Runners now, the, the women membership is, is about half as the men's, but most of the women will stay on the, on the flat roads and won't venture out onto the muddy hills. But I think hills are good for everybody. And if you're good at hills, even if you do a flat race, your legs will find the flat racing easier because you... And any little hill in there, you'll find that easier too. But um, yeah. So how to encourage people out there if I was to encourage people? I think if you get an ordnance survey map, not on your phone, just get a map and actually start looking at some routes. And um, once you get out and you see what the view's like from the top of the hill, you won't. I don't think you'll be happy running around the bottom of the hill. <laughs> so in 2019, I've got a couple of. Um, races planned but the biggest one is the Tour de Giants which is in September and I've just found out that I've got an entry for that which is 300 and something K so I'm going even longer and hopefully not slower at the same pace that I do everything at. I can see fell running and ultra running evolving um, at the moment we're, we're all in a little bit of a conflict with the landowners because the increase is, is, is causing quite a lot of problems and I'm access officer for the FRA so I'm dealing with quite a lot with the Peak District at the moment and hopefully in the future we can build a sort of working relationship where they understand what we want to do and we understand what they need us to do in order to, to get that. I would imagine one day somebody will do a triple round 
but whether they take sort of a week over it and nobody's actually that interested um, I think that might be the case because I think the challenge for me is not to just do the round but to do it in the 48 hours so you're basically doing a, a double Bob Graham because you're aiming for the 48 you know two times 24 hours and the same with the Ramsey it took me a long time to actually get over the fact that I hadn't done it because in my mind I hadn't actually done a double Ramsey I had been round the Ramsey twice but it was very slow it wasn't under the 48 hours that I was aiming for 